Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride. Today Rob and I are here at the Back to the 50s Car Show. And who should we run into once again? But Ken. Now you may remember Ken from his beautiful Riviera that we saw last year. This year there's a different family car that's been brought. So tell us what's behind us. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me again. Um, You're welcome. Uh, at the greatest show uh, that, that exists in the country. And we're at Back to the 50s here in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota State Fairgrounds 2022. So uh, my dad and I have been doing uh, car shows um, since I got my license. And uh, what we do is we take turns every year. So last year I had my 64 Buick Riviera. Uh, so this year it's his turn with his 1956 Buick Special. So now this, <laughs> there is quite the story behind this car. There, so there is indeed. It, 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 we'll we'll get to it, but stay tuned because it it's going to happen throughout the whole entire video here. So first of all, um, was your dad looking for a, a '56 or not? Uh, actually, he was looking for a '57 Buick. Okay. Uh, a pretty uh, pretty distinctive car because it has a, a, a three piece rear window, and during uh, in, in the process of the search. He uh, came across uh, this 56 Buick special. Uh, it was part of an estate sale. And uh, this was a, a, an internet search. And, uh, and this was back in the days where there probably wasn't a lot posted. This was 28 years ago. Absolutely, so it was most likely dial up. And uh, he came across this car and, um, and uh, looked into it. And he happened to be traveling through Wisconsin, which is where the car was located near Stevens Point. Okay. And uh, he was traveling with his boss and uh, they took a detour from the work day and uh, went to take a look at it. And uh, and he immediately knew that this was a, a good car for sure. So okay. he, uh, he, he offered, I think, $2,200 for the car, um, which back then, uh, you know, uh, that was pretty reasonable price. Okay. Today, you, you're not gonna find uh, right, what, gotcha. what we would consider a survivor because what he found here is a car that uh, I believe uh, first or maybe second owner, but uh, I think first owner possibly. I think it only had 28,000 miles on it, right? 20, uh, 28,000 original miles on this car. And it was you know, kept uh, in the garage. Uh, and, and the owner really was meticulous about winterizing this car and undercoating uh, every year. And we know this because in the process of taking the car apart, uh, it was quite a process. We had to chisel okay. away the undercoating and the underbody oh, protection man. to actually get at some of the fasteners to be able to take a piece of trim off. But we're really glad he did that because okay. this car had no rust on it. So, and again, this is a, up, up uh, central Wisconsin, northern uh, uh, Stevens Point area. So, Man, so I mean, yeah. e even at the point when your dad bought it, the car was old. It, it was, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing to find a car with that low of miles, and uh, we had we had enough experience, you know, uh, do, restoring, customizing cars, uh, to know that you know, uh, having a solid car is the key to uh, to getting it done quicker and even better sometimes. So uh, definitely cheaper. Yeah, and definitely cheaper. Yes, you will save money and a lot of time if you start out with a good solid car like this. So. I told you this would happen throughout the video, but one of the original things on this car that has not been touched, other than maybe wash and wax, right, is the chrome. All the chrome is original on this car. All the trim is original on this car. Uh, that is uh, nuts. It, it is, and you know, and to, to go ahead and rechrome it, I think it would take away uh, some of the cool factor uh, of this car because it's hard to find chrome this uh, this good shape. And it, it, I mean, there's a lot of chrome. There's a lot well, of chrome I mean, a on this car. There's a lot of chrome on this car. Yeah. Speaking of which, now in the front during '56, the year the the '56 year only, I think there was something unique about the 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 placard at the at the front where. Yes. So tell us about. Yes. That. So uh, it's the only car that actually states the year. Uh, on the on the front end uh, of the car and uh, also the back end and the back end as well. Okay. So, uh, to our knowledge, it's the only car that uh, that uh, model of car they came out with that uh, that had that. They so, had that. so it definitely uh, when people ask what year, my dad will say, "Well, go look at the front." 
and it says it right there from the factory. And of course, because it was a special, it had the three portholes on the yes. side instead of the four. So uh, if you know anything about Buicks, you see those portholes, and you uh, yeah. and they call them uh, ventiports uh, was the was the term they used. Um, if it had three portholes, it was the special. If it had four, for example, uh, it could have been the Roadmaster of the century. Okay. So uh, three was it, significant to the special. Three is significant to the special, and uh, and I, I think it really has a cool look to it. So a little sportier okay. look, but yeah. Now um, you actually have there's a, that's an actual air intake. Right yes, there? sir. Yes, sir. Oh man. It's hard when you walk up, so you can't tell if it's an illusion, a mirage, or if yeah. it's actually dipped. I mean, the, but it is actually the the the, 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 jewel, the jewel, There's jewelry, you know, on every every inch of this car, basically. So, oh, and knowing that, we, we we really didn't need to do that much to this other than paint it, lower the stance, and put wheels on it. And uh, okay, so and that's what you did to it. That's it. It is a paint job. And wheels and stance. Now we'll talk about in a little bit. The paint job is a little more involved than what Ken is letting on to. It but is. It is. the color is stunning. It is. Uh, I'm not a huge red fan actually because you just see it so much. But this is a red that I uh, have not gotten sick of. That's for sure. In fact, it is I red, line, red, red. I enjoy seeing it uh, every it, day. So it makes other reds look orange. It really does. Yeah, if you have this this car next to what would be considered a bright red car, yeah. uh, it almost makes that bright red car look kind of orangey brown because it's such a bright and red. We've seen that with a number of cars, either yes. parked close by or yes. going by. Yes. Okay, so let's walk down here before we kind of talk about the details of the paint. Yeah. Um, there's a neat little feature with this piece of trim here. There is. I could demonstrate it for Would you. Would you so, please? Uh, some of the fantastic engineering that took place uh, uh, back then on these uh, these uh, the mid '50s cars. So as you open the door, uh, basically it's a it's a, a, a rain shingle that flips up when you open the door and flips back down when you close the door. Ah. And engineering at its finest. That's amazing. And it works fantastic. Now, yeah. Let's talk about the color for a minute because the whole car has been repainted, right? Yeah. From the top to the bottom. You bet. And you painted it. I did, yeah. If you remember from my Riviera video, yep. uh, I, I was a representative for House of Color, uh, local here to uh, Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis. And um, it's uh, the, the founder of House of Color is John Kosmowski. And he was never satisfied with the reds that were available out there. Okay. So he set out to make the brightest red he could he can come up with and he searched high and low and found a very special pigment and he named the color after himself and it's called cosmos red with a okay. k so k-o-s-m-o-s -O -O red no yeah. longer available no longer available you can no longer get the pigment unfortunately um they've they've tried to uh, remake it it's not quite the same but uh exactly the same but uh, it's still a beautiful red the the re, their uh, their redo on the redo it line. Okay. But yeah, this red is definitely uh, bright. In fact, what's unique, really unique about it is that in the House of Color chip book, it's shown over a black base. And it was a beautiful red, even over a black base. But I thought to myself, what would make it even brighter could be if I put it over a white base. And, uh, oh. and I, I did a test panel and it came out bright as bright can be. It reminds me of a stoplight, basically, it when it's illuminated. It is so, red. Yeah, it's not an orangey red or a blue red. It is okay. red. So, for all of you folks out there that, you know, you paint your own cars or you customize them on your own, take heart because as beautiful as this looks, this didn't happen on the first try. It did not. It took me as, so as, tell us a little bit about that. as, uh, as decent of a painter I thought I was. Uh, you, you, there's no such thing as a perfect paint job. And certainly spraying something that's so, you know, unique and new, especially over a different, a lighter white base. Mm -hmm. um, it required me to actually walk from one end of the car to the other. So, and the reason for that is because if I would have painted the door yep. and then I moved over to paint the quarter panel, I would have overlapped in okay. where the seams are and it would have been a darker uh, red where, where I would overlap. So okay. you had to put it on very evenly and it required me to walk from one end of the car to the other with a 75% overlap for painters out there. Um, the first coat I put on was pink. The second coat was less pink. The third coat started to get red. And the fourth coat, it was red. And I decided to mix up clear and clear coat this car. 
But in the process, I was experimenting with the new HVLP technology back then. Again, this is 28 years ago. Yeah. And uh, HVLP is designed basically to use less paint, less air, less overspray, better okay. for the environment. Unfortunately, with a color like this, uh, might not have been the best choice. So uh, in the process of uh, clear coating it, I kept noticing these dark lines. Okay. They were very faint, oh, no. but it, it just didn't, it just seemed like something was off. Okay. So uh, my <laughs> woke up my lovely wife at three o'clock in the morning, had her come out in the garage, uh, to look at it, and, and if she, you're wondering, Ken is still married to the same. Woman, <laughs> I, I am despite thank, that. Thank goodness, uh, <laughs> she she still puts up with me. So uh, she uh, immediately confirmed my oh, no. suspicion and concern, and yeah, there was some striping in it. And uh, even though I sprayed it as even as I could, um, decided to g get some sleep, take a look at it in the morning. Okay. Uh, in the morning. Um, uh, it definitely had some lines in it. So got the sandpaper out, sanded it all back down, pulled out the old fashioned spray gun. It really puts out some material and blasted one more really wet coat, just like the old days. Yeah. I got uniform coverage. Mine, not, and and just the amount of red on there over that white base where I still retain that bright red color. Okay. And uh, and this is what we got. I don't think I could duplicate it, to be honest with you. So so for all these restorers out there, take heart because yeah. this didn't happen it's, in one yep. step. Now, and it, yep. you also followed, I believe, the same rule that you used uh, on your Riviera about this two thirds or absolutely. So, so tell uh, us about yep. the color, the red, the black, and the two thirds. So uh, watching all those car shows, like I mentioned, I think in my last video with the Riviera, uh, you should know. Well, you can if you want. It's all taste, of course, but I find and I agree that a car should be two-thirds one color, one-third the other if you are going to do a two-tone. Um, I wanted this to be a red car, not a half-red, half-black car. Okay. I wanted that red to be the dominant color of this car, and so to be able to do that, uh, I would have normally had a... a would have put the black, the black in the rear here. lower quarter as well. The original car would have had the exactly. Tone it would all have the, the second back. tone and the all the way back underneath. Um, and I'm glad I didn't. So that was a, a nice little touch. And for the record, I wanted uh, instead of the black, I wanted to do white. I think probably because it would have been easier. Dad overruled have, you. My dad overruled me. He insisted that red and black was going to be the the, the 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 cool factor, and uh, he was right. I so. tell you, it's stunning. Yeah, thank it's you. I think it's the contrast stunning. of how bright the red is against the dark black. And I, and I like that two-thirds rule because it definitely is a red and black. There you go. Color. And look at the three ports. So just yep. the rule of threes if we're in the in the art world out there. So, yeah, absolutely. Man. I spent right. I spent two years, by the way, just block sanding. Two, block two sanding years. primer. Yes, sir. So my dad told me to take my time, and I did that. <laughs> I took my time. But I really wanted it to be as straight as I could for him, and uh, I wanted him to have something uh, special, pun intended. Well, and, and yeah. you know, you're a, a little bit of, of a perfectionist, and yeah. that you want stuff to look just right. And we all know in body work and paint that, you know, the, I mean, if you don't have that sanding down right, Exactly. No matter how good of a painter you are, yes. it's not coming out right. So garage paint job, you get bugs and dirt in it. Yep. Not to worry uh, if you get those kind of things in the clear coat because you can wet sand just about anything out yep. unless it's too deep in there. You kind of pick things out along the way. But, uh, yeah, everything came out really well, and I got all that texture out of it. And that's the other part that I truly enjoy doing as a painter is the sanding, color sanding and buffing. Okay. And that is to get all that texture out of it. I mean, it, 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 when you walk down, I mean, there's just, I mean, there's no flaws in the paint. It's just. Oh, there's no perfect paint job, but uh, I appreciate that. Thank it, you, though. It, well, this comes from an untrained eye, of course, <laughs> here. But all right. So can we open up the the back here? You betcha. We've had a, a lot of people compliment that so we've been going in and out of this trunk. Uh, you know, we took some things out to clean it up to be able to show you guys here. So but it would have been carpeted. This just is like this. This is original material. And. The original spare, the original I understand. Spare, yep, that is Still correct. Still got the green line on it. Yep, that is correct. From 1956. That's, that is correct, yeah. My suggestion is do not use that spare. Nope, there's no, we have no plans <laughs> to do that. So uh, we, we try We try to be prepared when Boy, we do these long trips to, to not like, have that happen. So. I'd call that a three and a half Jimmy Hoffa trunk. <laughs> yes, you can certainly fit some stuff in the back of this boy, trunk. Boy, oh boy. And then, of course, if we bring it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, go ahead. You're going to see that. 
you know, the emblem again there it is. with the year and there the name. There it is. Oh man, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let you close it, but you woo. bet. Yeah, you're certainly not gonna see them put the year on a and and make a model on a on a car today. So all right, let's let's talk about the exhaust for a minute because you have dual exhaust coming out of the fenders, which was actually I think. An option. How cool is uh, w w were factory builds back in the 50s to be able to not be concerned about weight or cost, <laughs> but only be concerned about what looks cool? Yeah. And there's n no doubt it looks cool to have not only dual exhaust tips, but have them come, the exhaust tips come through the bumper. So very cool feature. That, that is cool. So the vehicle itself, did it come with that or did you... Add that it to did. It. it was. It, it was came with done. that, but it I, was. It was an option you could order when you bought yes. the car. I mean, it was yes, a beautiful thing. Yes, not an aftermarket. Yes, that is correct. All right, let's talk about the interior for a minute, and then I want to talk to you about that nail head engine. Oh, very cool. Yes. Okay. So, all right, Ken. I have a hard time believing the standing here, <laughs> but your dad says that this interior. Has never been touched. Never. You this are looking is at a showroom floor. True survivor interior. The reason why it looks so good after all of these years. Yeah. I, I, it's too many years to do the math right now. But uh, it had seat covers on it. I guess back in the day, when someone bought a car, a new car in 1956, they they were concerned about wearing through that pretty material. So they would put seat covers on. Uh, like right to protect away. that material right out of right from the dealership sometimes and uh, and the seat covers that were on it look similar to what the what the seats look like right here okay so we didn't know right away until as we took the, the interior out of it so we can start doing paintwork took the seat covers off and it was like unearthing something that no one has laid eyes on since this car was built and uh, it was incredible. an exciting exciting moment to realize that we are going to be the first ones to really sit on this upholstery. Man, from the factory. I mean, from it the does factory. literally look like it's just come from the showroom floor. <laughs> right? It I mean, is. That is a, absolutely amazing. One of my favorite parts of the car. Wow. Just now, incredible. You have got a really neat uh, a dashboard. you got a speedometer on the top. You've got the uh, three gauges below that. Which are aftermarket. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and the, right, right below the speedometer. Right that now, is factory. Now, below that, below all the chrome, of you course. do have three aftermarket. Of course. It's always nice to know uh, what your temperature is <laughs> and actually get a number reading on yeah. that. Oil pressure is very important as well. One of the neat features, too, that this had as standard was the Kleenex tissue box that is underneath. That actually swings out and tissues come out Is that the chrome? That's it. Yeah, that's a factory original option. But uh, that, can, you, can you can you show you that betcha. to us? You betcha. I I've never seen a swing out chrome Kleenex box. This oh, designed to hold the Kleenex for box. crying out loud! Mm -hmm. Hilarious! So neat. Oh my gosh! So neat. Now what were all the levers right in the middle? Air conditioning? Nah. This must have been ventilation though. This, yeah, just ventilation. There yeah. is uh, definitely not air conditioning on this car. Uh, um, and I can attest to that because we've yeah. driven it from Chicago to <laughs> Minneapolis to St. Paul for this car show several times. Um, and uh, and it's always inevitably hot on that now, drive. Now, so. um, the original transmission is in the car. The original drivetrain, original engine, never been apart. You've only, I think, rebuilt the carburetor. That's it. That's all that's been, that's all that was Dang. needed. Sometimes the, the worst thing to do is take things apart that aren't needed to be they taken, taken to apart. Be. So 28,000 miles originally. Currently it has 72,000. 72, so my dad drives this car all the time. He goes, he I seems see to be why. at two shows at once sometimes. Um, so, yeah. I think cars are, are meant to be driven. That's right. That's what I mean, this that's is. That's just awesome. So, in that, in that sense, there is one modification your dad shared with me with music. So, in the glove compartment, he yeah, left the, the original radio the, alone. So the AM radio that. wasn't going to cut it. So uh, And then he installed a uh, great just, little uh, idea to, a, to hide stuff. He's got yep. a little center console that he can remove. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, to have a, a MP3 player. Yeah, and, to be and those to, are nice. You can have Bluetooth, to, Bluetooth then you can have. It, absolutely. Right. It's just some of those things you can't even hold your cell phone yeah, when you're driving fun. anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So just some of those safety things. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So can we take a look at that original engine? You, My pleasure, yes. Oh, man. All you know, original, you know, except really, I painted it. That's I was going to say, it, lo it really looks about as clean as my engine. It, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. 
this doesn't look like it's been put in the car yet. Yeah, I so, it, yeah. Tell us about the engine. Tell us, well, it, it is a, the standard. It engine. is a standard uh, 322 cubic inch Buick nail head. And uh, nail head's a vintage engine. It's cool looking. They call it the nail head because it had small valves, high compression. They run so good. Nail heads are one of the coolest vintage engines. And uh, certainly to change that out would be sacrilegious in my opinion. Right. So, so um, and that you, paint is 28 years old on that engine. There, and, there, and there's a little story about when you were painting in yeah. the engine. Tell us about that. Well, uh, painted the engine first. After painting the engine, painted the car. In the process of painting the car, got overspray all over the engine. So, uh, so like yes, like no red? Oh, or? yes. Okay. The, all right. The, the wrong color all over that engine. Had to end up scuffing and re clear coating that engine and uh, end up turning out even better. Sometimes, uh, you know, things turn out better the second time anyway. So, but yeah, that's this is all original, all factory original. Man, and the only thing that's been done other than your, your, your repainted has been rebuilding the carburetor. That's it. Yeah. Original drivetrain. Um, uh, it has uh, Dynaflow transmission. Okay. Uh, which is really neat. You don't feel the shift. So it's just very a smooth, smooth, smooth. How many ride. speeds? Two. Two. And you just don't feel it. Uh, <laughs> they have a reputation for being leaky. And, uh, you know, my father, Ken Becker Sr., uh, he doesn't like things that leak, run hot. Yeah. Uh, it's got to stop good, start good, all of those things. And uh, stopping a, a Dynaflow from leaking is, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Well, you know, some things were meant to leak, I, I and that's, guess, that's yeah. just part of their design, yeah, it right? It means you got to pay attention to the transmission fluid. So, so uh, it means it's still got fluid in it if it leaks. That, there you right. go. That's exactly right. Still correct. got fluid in it then. That is so, exactly tell us just a little bit about this glass jar that we saw back here. What is that? People ask about that all the time. It was, it was a it's factory uh, windshield washer fluid. So oh. typically you have blue washer fluid in that. Look at that, just we, old masonry jar. I guess we should probably put some in there just for effect, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we've seen older cars with bags, you know, yeah, they exactly. were, you know, I mean. Yeah, they, 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 right, and then you have the, the, the plastic containers that discolor. Yep. It, it always looked pretty. Yeah. It does. Okay, it so that's does. what that, I was just, I was just curious. Oh, there you go. All right, so, you know, it, it, it was, it's nice to see the engine, but it'd be really sweet. If we could hear it run, is that a possibility? Yep, Ken. Yep, yep. Huh? Okay. So there is, there is. This doesn't start like a normal modern day car. No, with the turn of a key, correct? You okay. have to, you have to count to three. You have and to, then it starts. And then it starts. Right. Okay. So all of us are going to count to three. Okay. Here we go. One, One two, two, three. three. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, the '56 Buick actually starting back in. 1954, pretty advanced. What they did is they put a switch on the carburetor. Okay. And what what it does is it engages the starter by hitting the gas pedal. So all you have to do is have your key on, touch the gas pedal, and it'll start. The real interesting part is how does the starter not engage? Okay. And how that happens is when the engine starts, the vacuum, there's a little, the switch has a little ball bearing. Okay. And, and what happens, it makes contact positive, negative. But when it starts, the vacuum pulls the ball off, disengaging your starter, which is really creative when you think about it. That is quite some engineering. Mm -hmm. It is. A little, little thing. This so and, it's kind of like this, this the rain gutter. Yeah, piece but that's you know it. that's sort of common on, on Chevys and Oldsmobiles and Pontiacs in this year vintage. Okay, so this is not a real creative on Buick end as much as you know the starter. The, the starter's starter is the only is the one. one. Yeah, man. Yeah. So tell us what you know. What is one of your favorite memories with this car? Well, and as Ken said, you know, it's my son. It's he and I working together. We've been doing this thing now for. 33 years working together, building a few cars, and you know, it's just a memory I have, and I hope that he carries it on. Well, I, I think I think you've got him addicted. I don't <laughs> think there's any chance he's going any other direction at this point. Well, I will always be in the cars. So that that's just that's just so awesome. I mean, what a memory and a father-son time. That's just awesome. 
Oh, man, I tell you what, Ken Sr., Ken Jr., thank you so much for taking us uh, through this beautiful Buick. I mean, what an awesome uh, representation of the 56-year Buicks um, and such a stunning car and the story. So thank you. Um, thank you, Nate. Our pleasure. It. Two guys in a ride. Check it out. The best uh, uh, YouTube videos uh, that, that are out there. So uh, how, how thank much, you. How much, do I, how much do I need to pay you? <laughs> All right. Well... On that note, folks, thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.